Well, hello everyone. This is Andrew McKee here again on Fair Life at Life's Affair. Wow. So yes, uh, we did not have a Fair Life last week, and I know. Uh, yeah, that, there was a bit of that uh, <laughs> snowpocalypse kind of thing happening in Austin, since I am in Austin, Texas. So yes, no Fair Life last week, but that's okay. I'm back, everything's good, and we're going to uh, make up for it now. I've got a lot of stuff to talk about and go through now, two weeks worth. It's crazy. So it should be a lot more fun. Hey, everybody who's joining. Oh, I see Janine joined us. Hey, Janine. And uh, yeah, it's... I hope that everybody watching is in a good place and hasn't uh, isn't suffering too much from all of this. Uh, hopefully, water and everything's okay. Uh, <laughs> and Alicia is talking about a little snow. Nah, well, you're fine because you're used to that kind of thing. Down here, we're not. So uh, yeah, if ever, anybody, yeah, tell us how y'all are because I know we, we've checked in with some of you during the week, but. Uh, yeah, let, let us know. Make sure. I, I want to know everybody's okay and uh, what's the worst that's happened thing that's happened to you this week. Hopefully nothing too bad. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been an interesting, crazy time. So, yes, uh, I guess the first thing to say is, uh, assuming everybody's doing okay, <laughs> uh, if you can, yeah, share share the stream and share it for other people watching and everything because... Yeah, we're we're really behind on uh, shows and everything because no fair life last week. So yeah, share it and help us out. We'd appreciate it. Uh, definitely. So yeah, Chris is asking, have you unfrozen yet? And it was 18 down here last week. Yes, it actually got down to just about single digits here in Austin. It was it hit around nine degrees, which I've never experienced in Austin before, ever. In fact, I, I looked it up. The last time it got down um, to single digits in Austin was 1989. So, yes, yes, doesn't happen too much. <laughs> and Alicia's making a joke about uh, Cancun, which is a um, Ted Cruz reference. I, I don't really get too political on here, but uh, generally, but yeah, <laughs> let's just say. On, on the list of bad ideas, um, just on a PR standpoint, bad idea. Uh, it, it, if you didn't see it, they led with that as one of the main jokes on the cold open on Saturday Night Live last Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's not a place you want to be. Not a place you want to be, Ted. Not a place. Ah. <laughs> and Kristen said she's here and she brought the wine. Way to fight through it, Kristen. Good job. Good job. And Chan, you're back. Yay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and go through the quick Austin update. They finally certified our water today. So as long as you have water, yay, um, you don't have to boil it anymore, at least for the most part in the Austin area. I think there still are a few small areas, but they finally cleared that this afternoon. So yes, yes, it, uh, that is a good feeling. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I finally took a shower this afternoon, and boy, did it feel good. <sighs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> so, yes. and uh, Susan, hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always, always interesting. Now, oh, so much to go over. Let me think here. Uh, wow. Because uh, if I go too long, we're not going to get through it all. I'm, I'm just, for the first thing, glad that all of you are okay. Um, <laughs> Brown Rock did not have water issues, according to Jan, which that's an area just north of Austin. So good to hear. Yeah, it was it was an Austin thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee is not lying. I uh, she was in the meeting with me, and I went like, "No more boil. No, this is done. Yes." Yeah, that's exactly how I did it. Exactly how I responded. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, <laughs> and Kristen says she drank some of the water and she's waiting for her superpowers. Keep us updated on that because that would be, you know, that's, that would be an interesting show in development. Um, I, I, you know, write this down, Lee. I like that. That is not a bad plan. Not a bad plan. <laughs> 
Oh yes, and I, I understand, Kristen. You had like a you had a, a new goat a, added to your collection, correct? Yeah, questionable Niederwald water. Doesn't Niederwald kind of sound like something they would have in the Marvel universe? Like you know the whole uh, the Niederwald water supply uh, on a sign, you know, and then all of this stuff happens, and the next thing you know, it's a new series by Marvel. I like it. I like it. We'll talk. We'll talk. It's it's going to be a good one. It is going to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, Jan stayed with uh, stayed with her son uh, Kevin, and uh, boiling water. Well, that is the thing. That is the thing. I l only lost power a little bit at the beginning, but for the most part, it worked out okay. I was very fortunate. Um, I know a lot of people in the Austin area and around Texas who are not so fortunate. It uh, it was a rough week for everyone. Definitely a rough week. Uh, so yes. Four new goats, Kristen? Well, apparently cold weather is good for goats. I did not know that, but that's a new fact for me. Cold weather, good for goats. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, yes, right? I mean, I think you're going to have to have your own um, uh, goat collectible cards with a picture of each goat on them and their name and information and stats and all of that. I think that I think that's going to be a thing. I think that's going to be a thing for sure. Yes, yes. Uh, wow. Yeah, haven't and so okay. Uh, Katsurita lost uh, lost water. Uh, yeah, water's a tough one because with electricity, you know, you feel like, well, I can go on some batteries and I can do some stuff and I can go into my car or something and charge it, uh, a phone in that. But water, that's that's kind of tough. Um, very tough, especially since everybody was hoarding the bottled water and it was not that you could drive on the ice sheet that was the roads anyway, uh, depending on where you're living. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I know a few more people joined since I started this. So yeah, again, share the, uh, share the stream if you can. We'd appreciate it if you haven't already. Because uh, yeah, it, it has been a rough week. and <laughs> But things are better now. Things are not uh, are, are not as bad as they were, and that's always a good thing. And yeah, oh oh, I do have one new thing I can talk to you about real quick. I do have a new shirt. So since uh, you were always interested in the shirts, here you go. The thing I love about these kind of things because there's always a, a fandom that works and that you like, but there's always multiple fandoms, and this is this bridges two fandoms. So you get two fandoms. Uh, mashed together. I love the mashed up fandom shirts. Those are always my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Always, always good. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, little Calvin and Hobbes mixed with Firefly. Always a good plan. <laughs> so, one sad thing point of last week is that I missed one of my favorite holidays, Cheap Candy Day. I mean, every February 15th, um, there's just a lot of the overstock of really tasty chocolate and caramel and all of that good stuff with uh, mixed in with some peanut butter now and then. Oh, uh, they, they are, the prices are slashed and you can get a ton of candy for very little money. So yeah, I was going to go and spend $20 to kind of give you a report and take pictures and do the whole thing. Didn't quite work out <laughs> because well, all the places were closed. Not that I was willing to brave the icy roads anyway. So yes, yes, um, no cheap candy day. I, I did manage to go uh, like uh, on uh, Saturday and check it out just to see. And there still was some Valentine's candy there, but not much. It was just the, you know, the little bits left. It wasn't a really good. So it was kind of a, a busted cheap candy day for me this year. But there's always next year. There's always next year. You know, that's not going to get me down. It's okay because these things happen. And, you know, the, the trick is going the next day, the next morning, if you can, go to your CVS, go to your Walgreens, um, especially the ones that are not the main stores, the ones that are off the beaten path that not as many people go to. Those are the best because they still have a lot more candy and they just automatically start at 50% off. 
And if they have more as the days go on, they don't clear out enough. They start tr going down to 75% off, 80% off. Uh, it's crazy. So something to look for. Something to look for. It's a little, little tip. But next year, definitely we'll get into that more and more. And I'll give you a good strategy guide for Cheap Candy Day and how to make it your own. Those are the best. Ah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> and Kristen is saying, trapped, frozen in a house with candy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cookies from multiple sources. You see, now for me, all I had was a bunch of pasta. That's it. I mean, I, I was just pasta day after day after day after day. Oh, I got sick of pasta. I am, yeah, no more pasta for me. Definitely, definitely. Well, yeah, Kristen, uh, she's, she says she's a bit of a snob with candy, that she wants particular ones. You know, it's surprising because the thing about CVS and Walgreens, one of the reasons I recommend them and not like the grocery store, is that they usually handle the snobbish candy. They handle some of the, the, really, some of the good stuff. I mean, it, it, you have to get there early on Monday morning, but they still tend to have some. So something to think about, something to think about, depending on what you mean by snobbish and what your favorite candy is. Huh. Oh, yes, Easter candy. And, and Katsurita makes a very good point. There is more than one cheap candy day. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it is the day after Valentine's Day is always a good one. But, you know, after Easter is a good one, too. Um, not my favorite, but it is. They do have some uh, definite good treats that you only find on that day. And then, of course, after Halloween. But, you know, that's that's certainly a different animal, too. And Janine cooks stir-fry for Valentine's Day. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, yes. Cadbury eggs and Russell Stover's. Yes. Yes. Alicia, you are correct. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Now you're just torturing me. We're, we're getting off the subject because, no, this is... No. No. This, this is wrong. You're, you're trying to torture me. I see what you're doing. Yes. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because I missed all of this and I'm still... I'm still on my diet because I have no choice. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, and Christmas. Yeah, I, I didn't even mention the uh, Christmas. But after Christmas, I've never found Cheap Candy Day after Christmas works as well. They tend to clear out a lot of that kind of thing. And it's normally like, unless you like candy canes, there's not really as much to do for Christmas. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I've never found that to be as good. Um, yeah. Our, you know, they need to expand Cheap Candy Day. You're right, Kristen. You're right. You know, a nice, the day after Arbor Day, I like it. That That's a good one. Um, yeah, I mean, have some good post-other holiday um, Cheap Candy Days. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Like, let, let, let's get an early jump before uh, Valentine's and get cheap Groundhog Day candy. Let's Let's do that. I like it. I like it. Yeah, there is a lot of mint chocolate after Christmas. There is some of that. But, uh, yeah, I still don't find it. it, it there's very only a few specific things. It, it's just not my favorite. There's not as much of a um, not as much of a variety. Not as much of a variety. Oh, yeah, I, I think we're, we're really prepping here. We're going to have to have strategies. Every time a cheap candy day comes up, we're going to have to have, uh, have some good strategy sessions going here. Um, yeah, definitely definitely talk about it. And I'll, I'll have to go out and take pictures and... and yeah, let you, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get this right. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to be a team on this. It's going to happen. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Ah, <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, peppermint chocolate can be good, but I, I find most of the candies that have it are not. It, I, it has to be a particular type because most of the time the peppermint, and it, it's too, how do I put this? When you... A lot of the peppermint chocolate candies I've had, it's mostly chemicals. It doesn't taste real. It, it just, it, it's so fake. Um, occasionally you'll find something that does taste good, but yeah, that's, that's the trick. That's the trick. Oh gosh, you're still, you're still torturing me. I'm letting you, I'm letting you. I'm falling into the trap. You're still talking about candy. Okay, okay, we're moving on. We're moving on. Now, the last time we, the, the, the last thing we were, we did before, uh, you know, after our, the last Fair Life was our Thursday show um, a week and a half ago, I guess now. Yeah, about a week and a half ago with uh, Bonnie Moffat, the storyteller. 
and that was that was a lot of fun. Um, that was a whole lot of fun. That let's see, yeah, here we go. There she is, and she told a great story, and I did the music for the background, and it was thirty minutes of straight music. It was kind of bizarre. Bizarre. I'm not falling for it, Drew. I'm not commenting on that. <laughs> it, it was a fun experience because I got to uh, I got to essentially just compose a lot and just go with it and have fun. Uh, I worked on a background uh, piece on the mandolin and then worked on a recorder part and went through and it was uh, it was good. It was good. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm not, no, I'm not looking at Kristen's comments either. You keep bringing me back to the candy. Mm. Evil, 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 evil. But no, I mean, the story was a great story, and that made composing music so much fun and easy. Um, it worked so much better. This was sort of like a, a test for it to see how well it would work. And I think it worked really well. What, what did y'all think? I mean, uh, Liz is saying, great show. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, they didn't, who else saw it, and, and what, did, what did you think? Any feedback on that? Because it was an interesting test to see if that would be something we would want to do in the future, and I think we kind of do. I think this is something we're going to do now and then. Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and you should go watch it if you haven't. Um, definitely. Uh, a very fun story, and you get to hear some music of <laughs> that I <laughs> that I put together, too. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So, yes, uh... Well, yeah, I know, I know. Lee. She's saying that we are already working on the next one, and that's true, but feedback is appreciated. I mean, I, this was a test, and we liked it and everything, but I, I'm always interested to see... Um, <laughs> I always like to see what y'all think, because, believe it or not, this is sort of where we get a lot of the direct feedback from uh, from the shows. So, yeah, your, your comments actually matter more than most. Um, no pressure. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, you know, uh, no, no, I'm not falling for it. I'm not going to mention Fredericksburg. I almost did. Oh, well. <laughs> very subtle, Bonnie. Very, very, very subtle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great stories. Great, great job. Great show. I really liked it. I'm sure Lee will put up a link for it, uh, if, uh, and you can check it out. It is really definitely worth something to... <laughs> Yeah, very good, very good. I think that was a... I think it's a good way to do stories because it, it's... Yeah, I, I think it with the music in the background, it, it adds, having a soundtrack really just adds to that. I think it's a... It just adds an extra dimension to it. Yeah, that's right. And Lee's totally right. That story was an original. Um, yeah, Bonnie Moffat did write that so that is always cool and it was it was I, when when Lee and I first found out that uh, she, yeah, she wrote that we were just like oh my god I didn't know she wrote that <laughs> like wow that was really good I mean we, we just we we didn't uh, we didn't know I mean we, we figured she got it from somewhere else because it was just yeah that um, it, it, it's always because so so many pr performers do borrow from other other um, other artists, so we just thought, oh, she probably just got one, but then we found out that she wrote it, and it was, wow, that's, yep, yep, definitely cool. Oh, good, she put up a link. So, yeah, definitely check out that show. It is really, really good. Um, and then, um, last week, we didn't have a fair life, of course, because of the weather and how much that sucked. It, I, it, the, they were talking about, uh, rolling blackouts in Texas, and I, there was a little flicker with the power here, and it, it, it scared me to death on Monday, and I was kind of like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have power. So we, we played it safe and didn't do that, uh, didn't do a fair life. But as the week progressed, I, I kind of figured, okay, I think we can be safe, so I think it's going to be okay. So we did have a gathering, and we had um, Drunk and Disorderly. And that was, uh, yeah, yeah, that was Drunk and Disorderly on Thursday. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, their music, uh, really interesting instrumentation, 
with uh, a guitar and I, I, is that I think it's a I think it's a bazooki uh, and a drum and, and yeah just some cool stuff so definitely interesting so definitely something to check out from last Thursday drunken disorderly they they really did some weird stuff with the lighting I I, I wasn't quite sure how to color correct that or, or do or work with it but I, I think it turned out okay considering um, yeah yeah it, it was it was definitely it was definitely different it was uh, a lot darker than normally what our videos are um, I, I, I don't know if they were just going for a late night kind of feel with the candles I assume that's what they were going for but uh, yeah it was definitely different definitely a different approach and uh, good music so check that out that is our gathering from uh, last Thursday and in the middle of snow snow apocalypse so hey something fun uh, that we brought to you in spite of it all which I'm kind of proud of it was a bit of a <laughs> interesting time so yes and let's see after that uh, oh right we also had uh, the last two weeks of Shakespeare reviews and now for sort of a Valentine's Day special we did um, Nomeo and Juliet, which I love that film. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's just pretty cool. Um, it, it's just a fun, fun movie that is a great take on Romeo and Juliet. And I know it's animated, but <sighs> it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could, you could do it in live action and it would still be hilarious and great. So something to check out. Definitely watch that movie and check out Shakespeare Reviews, our review of it, because uh, we had a lot of fun with that one. It was, yeah, we, I'll just spoil it for you. We both liked it. <laughs> so we had a fun time talking about it. And yes, then we had uh, last Friday's Shakespeare Reviews. Yes, Kristen, Maggie Smith, you're right. Uh, yeah, th there's some interesting, you know, actually, yeah, let's just go, uh, let's just go full here. There you go, so you can see it clear. Um, James McAvoy, uh, Matt Lucas, Maggie Smith, Emily Blunt, Michael Caine, Jason Stratham, and uh, several others too. Um, oh, that I didn't get on the screen, but yeah. I, Dolly Parton and Hulk Hogan provide voices too. I mean, it's a very interesting cast, and the director did a weird thing where he didn't care about people's names. He just listened to voices and decided who was best from that. He, it wasn't about their name or how famous they were. And of course, some of them, Maggie Smith and Michael Kent, you're going to recognize them. But yeah, I, the casting was great. I think everybody's voice was just about perfect. So yeah, definitely, definitely good. <laughs> so something to check out. Something to, something to definitely check out. Um, yes. So there, there's yeah, Nomeo and Juliet. And, <laughs> wow, Hulk Hogan is our mortal enemy. Well, you know, funny you should describe him that way because that's kind of how he's depicted in, in the movie. So I think you might appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, he's kind of like this annoying voice. He, he's, he's not an actual character. It's just, he just plays an annoying voice. That's all. So I think you'll be fine with that. I think you'll be fine with it. Wow. <laughs> so last Friday, it was the 1980 BBC version of The Taming of the Shrew. And this was with John Cleese of Money Python fame. It is really the only name you'd notice in there. Everybody else are just good British character actors uh, that do a lot of British TV. But this is, yeah, I, it, it was surprisingly good. It was surprisingly good. I. Yeah, I mean, a very good version of Taming of the Shrew if you actually want to see most of the play, not a heavily abridged one. And I'm definitely a fan. Uh, the BBC during that time, in the well, I think from 78 until the uh, mid-80s, they each season they'd keep doing more, and they ended up doing every Shakespeare play. So it's kind of a nice anthology to check out if you want to watch uh, some of the obscure ones, especially because at that point there were several plays that had never been put on film before. So something, uh, 
<laughs> something interesting. And wow, Kristen really doesn't like Hulk Hogan, apparently. Um, wow. Wow, okay. Well, that's good to know. Good to know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So that is, I think, most of the old stuff. I think we kind of, we kind of got that, right? Uh, I think we covered that. And I did it in 30 minutes. I tried. I tried. No matter how much you distracted me with candy, I got through it. That was my goal. Get through the old stuff in 30 minutes, and then I'll have the new stuff in the next 30. So we're good. We're good. Whew. Made it. Okay. Excellent. So back we are. Now, I did get Fair Life this week, but we did have a problem with gathering for this Thursday. Because of the weather and problems with that, uh, Naughty Nauticals could not finish recording their stuff, their show for Thursday. And while, I mean, maybe they could have tried to record something um, sometime this week and finish it up and tried to rush and get something eh, together with that, we, we, don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. We're not those people. Uh, only good shows for y'all. So where they are, Naughty Nauticals is rescheduled to March 11th. And we are not having a gathering this week, um, you know, because of weather. Uh, I think it's, yeah, pretty understandable. And yes, I think that it is a, uh, I totally understand how it worked out. Now, the Shakespeare reviews coming up for this Friday, that should be, that, that's fine. That's in the can, so we are good. Uh, that will be Friday morning as always, and it is going to be 1953's Julius Caesar. Now, if you ever saw the movie Julius Caesar in school, this is, I'm sure, the one you saw. Uh, the one with Marlon Brando and John Gilgood and James Mason and all of that. Yeah, that's it. And it's, it's such a good version. Uh, so many good things about it. So definitely check out that if you're interested in Julius Caesar. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't imagine why you'd be interested in, you know, a, some... some a, sort of a tyrannical dictator type person who uh, tries to, and, and people are plotting a coup about it. I mean, psh, it's not really relevant these days, but, you know, I mean, it's still an interesting story. So something to check out. Um, and, and yes, Kristen beat me to it. We have an Alana Dale show next week. If you're familiar with uh, Sherwood Forest Fair, uh, that's where Alana Dale uh, plays a uh, I think fairly exclusively, but yes, he, uh, he is a great musician and performer. So we're going to have a lot of fun with him and he will be next week. So something to look forward to. Uh, and yeah. Oh, we also, and Lee brings this up an interesting one too. We also do watch parties. I mean, the video gets released on Friday morning on our, our station. And then Dan and I on, on his, uh, channel get, do a watch party together and, you know, Aaron chat talking about it a little bit. It's a lot of fun. So something to check out. And Kristen says she's marrying Alan Adele 17 times. Oh, once a day. I get it. Because she's on cast at a Sherwood Forest Fair. So that's how it's going. Excellent. Excellent. Well done. Well done. Well, I, I hope all of your honeymoons are a pleasant and happy ones. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I hope all the weather for each of your weddings goes well as well. Believe me, I'm going to be hoping for good weather for the next six months after what we just had. I'm not going to take anything for granted. Mm. <laughs> and speaking of that, speaking of that, let's go ahead and talk about seven reasons. Here we go. Seven reasons. Because... Yeah, uh, this is the seven reasons that snow in Texas sucks. Now, I know you can't imagine any or anything off the top of your head for this, I'm sure, right? No, no, you can't. Probably not. Uh, not at all. But I came up with a few off the top of my head just to kind of help this go. Just to kind of make it work. Um, yeah, yeah. So here we go. Seven reasons... Um, 
why snow in Texas sucks. Here we go. Number seven. Snow equals freezing. See, people in central Texas, um, we're not really that, and south Texas and all that, we don't really know this. Very, it's not something we've had to encounter much. You know, when it's actually snow, that usually means the temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or uh, I believe the technical term is freezing. It's a thing. Who knew? So, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's a surprise. But that actually means that snow is an indication of very cold. So that's a good safety tip. And for all of us ultra Southern people, um, yes, I think that's good to remember. Good to know. Something I, I think a lot of us forgot there a little bit. Um, definitely forgot a little too much. Uh, number six, number six, no snow plows. Yeah, do you think there are snow plows in Austin? You think there's snow plows elsewhere in South Texas? They're not. Do you think there's snow plows in um, Northeast Texas? No, really, no. I mean, in the Panhandle, yeah, probably. But down here, no, no. We don't do snow plows. I mean, if if the city bought a snow plow, they would use it for um, once every thirty years. So the first snow plow they buy would not even be used except in parades. I mean, it'd be like it'd be like a overglorified Zamboni, and that's it. And then you know, then maybe the next one or the one after that, that's the one that might actually get used once, because that's how often it the snow gets bad enough to require a plow. But when it happens, it's bad. It's bad. Uh, so yeah, yeah. No snow plows. So that that's you got to remember that. You got to remember that. And only like a few trucks to actually put sand on some of the highway bridges. It's not good. Not good. Okay, number five. Trying to keep the expletives out of here. I promise. Uh, pipes are set up to deal with heat, not cold. I mean, here I should say, because pipes they're all about the environment. They're optimized for the general environment they're in. They're trying to optimize the the flow based on the temperature they give. If if they want to either keep some pipes cold and they want to keep some pipes hot and, it, and they put them in the house based on that concept of what's going to be the most efficient over time power wise. I mean, so where pipes in the north are very much protected against the cold as much as humanly possible, down here, no, they're actually protected more against the heat because you don't have, you have to deal with extreme heat here, not really extreme cold, except every, you know, 30 plus years. So that's where you go. Um, it, it's, yeah, you got to be careful. So you got to be careful with your pipes. You've got to find out where they are in, in your house or apartment or whatever, and make sure that they can be winterized if you need them to be. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Uh, number four, my fair clothes are my warmest. It's the truth. I, I, I can't, I can't make this up. I mean, if I want the warmest clothes that I have, it's my fair garb because I have done fairs. I've traveled and there have been fairs where it's been really cold and I have to spend, you know, 10 hours outside in this really cold weather. Now, when I say really cold, I don't mean cold like last week here in Austin. I mean, cold as in, um, you know, reasonably cold, like 50, <laughs> maybe 45, maybe 40. No expletives. I'm doing good. Yes. Yes. So yeah, um, it was a great excuse. And yeah, Alicia's right. It was a great excuse to wear um, your fair garb. And I definitely, <laughs> let me say, my cloak came in handy. I mean, you know, how, how many wool garments do I have? In fair garb? Several. Out of fair garb? No. So <laughs> that's kind of how it works. My warmest stuff is my fair garb. So it was a good excuse to wear some fair garb. I'm sure you, uh, um, you probably, some of you probably enjoyed that as well. Number three reason why snow in Texas sucks. You can't drive on ice. And I mean, we're not used to it. We've never tried. I mean, okay. Do you remember when you were like three or four years old or even five, six, seven, whatever age, when somebody first tried to teach you how to throw a ball or a baseball or whatever, and you were horrible at it? I mean, you're just like, ah, 
ah, it, it just, it didn't work. I mean, it, the ball went nowhere near where you wanted it to. You didn't understand mechanics. You know, it, it just, it, there was a lot of things that had to come together motion wise and you didn't understand it yet. Gradually with practice, you got better at it. Nobody here, unless they've lived in the North for a long time and, and moved here, nobody here has that practice. We don't know how to drive on the ice. We do not. So even if you do, do not go outside because the people around you are going to be slipping and sliding all over the place and running into you. It's a dangerous place. You cannot do it. That cars aren't geared for it. Our minds aren't geared for it. Um, th there's nothing good about ice. So if there's ice, everything shuts down and justifiably so. So yeah, don't be a hero. Stay at home. Right. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Infrastructure. Yeah. So maybe some of you have watched the news a little bit. And let's just be honest. Um, there's a certain relation between different areas and power and water and natural gas and how they all work together and relate to each other. Like you lose, you, you the gas wells freeze up and they, uh, they don't, uh, they don't give you the electricity. The electricity stops working and the water treatment plant can't, uh, can't uh, lose its power and can't treat the water. And then you have no water. You have no water. You have no easy way to boil it because you have no electricity and no gas. And <laughs> these all relate to each other, you know? So you kind of need to take care of all of them. So yeah, um, that's not really something that you need to worry about. This is sort of a statement for Texas as a state in general. Not that I'm bitter. Okay. See how I did that without cursing once, Lee? Aren't you proud? Okay, number one. <laughs> number one. I despise cold weather. Let's just admit this. I'm a cold weather wuss. Okay? And this goes into direct, uh, as a direct reply to Kristen and her request for a kilt frolicking video for me to go out in the 12 degree weather in my kilt, um, in the snow, and frolic in the camera while I'm having, you know, yeah, I'm a wuss. I, I don't know. I don't do that. I don't know. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I, I can admit that. I can admit. Oh, and Lee did. She had, she will, she tried. She tried to get me to go out. She actually begged more than once. It was like, oh, come on. And I'm like saying, no, 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 no. You don't understand. We all have our kryptonite. This is mine. This is mine. I mean, when it gets under 50 degrees, I, 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 no, no. I mean, I've lived down here so much that, yeah, it, it's no, no. Um. <laughs> oh, Kristen, come on. <laughs> I got you your seven reasons, right? Oh, come on. I had a rough week. I miss cheap candy day. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I, uh, Lee is correct. I did say begging. Uh, begging is not quite the right word. I mean, dictatorial ordering from afar in chat is probably how I'd describe it. And I reacted just like you would think I would if somebody tried to order me around, like any musician would. <laughs> um, yeah, because that's, that's how I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. So Kristen, no, how about this? We're starting to get some nice warm weather now. So how about if I frolic an after shot of me in my kilt um, in warm weather, really, really happy. How's that? Does that work? Is that a good one? I'll work on that. Does, does, is that is that cool? Because that way I, you don't have to see me suffer. Like I know you don't want to because you're not a sadist. You want to see me happy. So then you get to see me frolic in the nice weather. Right, right, right. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll work there. We'll work there. <laughs> and Kristen is saying that if I'd frolicked, she would have never given, given me a hard time again, which we all know that's not true. So yeah, uh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, mercy, mercy. Okay, so 
That is seven reasons for the week. I hope you like them. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Ah, so here we go. Yeah. Um, we we do have. I, I mentioned that Shakespeare reviews Julius Caesar. It's coming up this Friday. And remember to RSVP. Go ahead and uh, check into the event and uh, click that you're interested in going. It really helps with our our system here in Facebook and uh, makes really well for YouTube just you know subscribe to the channel so that if you haven't already so you can get to uh, get reminders of things coming up and all of that uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. sure what's gonna be interesting it sounds sounds like according to the chat comments but yes I think uh, do that we also have something else really cool coming up here very soon. And this, yeah, this is something you really need to check out. Uh, actually, yeah, let me go and we're doing, we're doing uh, a tax webinar series, Brandy's tax webinar series. She's very qual a qualified expert in doing, uh, well, and in tax information, but also especially doing it for people who work at Renaissance fairs and people, uh, merchants, uh, cast, um, performers, whoever, and has a lot of experience doing that. And she's going to do a series for us um, of really good, some really good information on this. If for those self-employed people who do their taxes, um, it's, it's the tax law always changes. There's always things you could do better. There's always money you could save that you don't know about. Uh, so yeah, definitely something interesting to come to check out. Let me see. I think I have, uh, yeah, I think I can do here. There we go. Um, the tax webinar series week one is going to be, uh, 2020, uh, pandemic BS. You should know. And going on to different options after that tax tips for the self-employed independent contractors, cash earners, um, Week three, tax tips and strategies for business owners. And week four, uh, St. Patty's Day Tax Basics Seminar. Drinking game edition. Yeah, got to have the drinking game edition. So yeah, something interesting to check out. Um, we are working on that right now. And uh, definitely check that out. I think Lee has some uh, links for you to, to take a look at. But yeah, RSVP that. And... Uh, come if you want to be a part of it. I mean, you can just watch it later, but if you want to be a part of this actual webinar itself and be able to ask questions, join in. Otherwise, if you can't do that, okay, we'll be uh, rebroadcasting it later so you can check it out after that. But if you have any direct questions, this is a great opportunity to have them answered by an expert. So something, uh, yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, Kristen, yeah, I know that that's 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 a naughty word. I did not say it. I um I have purposely avoided saying it because I wouldn't do that. I, I didn't make up this graphic. That was that was Lee. She she's a naughty person. Sorry. Totally not me. Totally not me. Oh, you know, I was just like, <laughs> I was just making a face of innocence, and I realized nobody can see me. <laughs> oh well, let's let's do let's try that again. Here we go. Um. Yeah, totally not me. There we go. Now that was my face of innocence. So, whew. <laughs> yes. So, Lee, check out the. Or, yeah, she she put up the Lee put up the links for that. So yeah, definitely check it out in RSVP, and so that we have all that, and you can get a link to be a part of the Zoom uh, webinar, uh, that that meeting, and get in there and uh, yeah, have some of your questions answered and really learn a lot more about how to do this. I know that all of us are going to be in there. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, thanks. Angel face. I like it. I like it. But no, something to look at, and I think it's going to be very beneficial. I'm going to be in there taking extreme notes. Uh, no joke. So <laughs> uh, check it out, and I think it will be very beneficial. So let's see. Oh, there is one more sad thing that is probably going to incur the wrath of Kristen. <sighs> I try, but alas. Um, with 
all the craziness last week. I, I thought I knew where... The, okay, a couple of weeks ago... We, let me recap. A couple of weeks ago at, on Fair Life, we talked about a lot of things. And I, I mentioned the fact that I used to um, do puppets a little bit. You know, just hand puppets of my own. But I, I did work with some others for a little while there, too. Uh, and I, I said I could bring some of them out. But... Uh, yeah, they weren't where I thought they were. They're deep in storage, apparently. So I'm going to have to move a lot of stuff to get to them. I tried to get all that out today and couldn't, ran out of time. So what I'm going to do is now that I, I can access everything and everything's a lot easier now. Um, I mean, no, really, I, I actually, there was a horrible leak in, uh, from uh, the, the roof and I could not get into the storage to actually get anything before today. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I will work on it this week, and I, I'll go in and get behind. Uh, I have to move a lot of boxes, but I will get everything, and I will get those puppets out. So don't worry. Um, I will take care of that next week, okay? No worries. I, I, I guarantee. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, yes, David O'Leary. Excellent. So David O'Leary is on there, and he is our guest for next week. So um, definitely uh, come out and check that out, because that is going to be a lot of fun. Remember, no gathering this Thursday, but um, gathering next Thursday, and it'll be David O'Leary. Really good stuff. Or Alan Adele. Ha. Huh. Yeah, uh, that is true. I did kind of have a tree on my roof. Um, it's not really the best time. Uh, yeah. There's a tree on my roof, dear Liza, dear Liza. Yeah, it was, it was a weird week. It was definitely a weird week. Um, never seen icicles that long in Austin before. Very, very strange. Very, very strange. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Kristen, next week. Definitely puppets. Definitely puppets. It will happen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, David. I, I, Kristen was telling us that you are her future husband. Um, 17 times, at least. So that, that is always good. That is always good. <laughs> Whew. I think I did all right. I, I think we got through almost everything I needed to. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We made it. So yeah, I, I'm really glad to hear that all of you are doing okay in spite of all the craziness that's been going on the last week. And uh, please, everybody stay safe and uh, be careful here because uh, things are starting to get back to normal temperature-wise a little bit, but you know, it's uh, there's still other stuff going on. So uh, yeah, be safe and we, we're thinking about you. And yeah, hope to see you here in the next uh, few days for the tax webinar i mean rsvp about that and yeah we'll look forward to seeing you next week for uh, another fair life and <laughs> alan adele on, on gathering and uh yeah shakespeare reviews julius caesar and then let's see after that let's see um good question we have uh there are two movies after that there's richard the third from 1995 and uh, then there's Anonymous from 2011. So we'll, we'll check out that uh, later for Shakespeare Reviews. Hmm. Okay, and for the award for most random statement, um, I've seen in chat so far on Life's Affair, Kristen says, I might run off and marry a large pretzel instead, though. Hmm. Okay, that's that's different. Okay. Yeah, you can go, Lee's totally right, you can go to the events section on the Life's Affair Facebook page and see what's coming up and check out all the events. There are some good ones, so definitely a lot of fun. <sighs> also, yes, I should, Susan is right, I should totally do some shameless self-promotion of my own. Uh, I'm usually trying to work and help with other people doing their stuff, so... Yes, I, I should do that. Um, yeah, actually, the 
you have Allendale on Thursday night, but on Friday night um, of next week, on the 5th, I am going to be on um, Shakespeare's channel doing a live show. Uh, yeah, doing a live show on, on Friday night. So do check that out. I'll, I'll give you some more information about that next week, but definitely look for it because it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, no pressure. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I, I really have to stop reading comments to get to me. Um, that is, yeah. 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 You guys are, are, you guys are interesting people. They're very, very silly. Very silly. And since I'm not silly, it's hard for me to relate. Yeah, I can't pull that off. I tried. So yes, yes. Andrew concert on the 5th. Uh, and so we'll, we'll just go a back to back thing. There's, Alan and Dale on Thursday, me on Friday, so check it both out. Now, mine, uh, I will say, is a paid concert. It is, uh, it is five dollars for the concert. But if you're on my Patreon page, uh, then you get free access. So you could join Andrew's Patreon. No pressure, no pressure at all. <laughs> if you want, and that would uh, that would give you admission. Uh, my Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Irish Bard. So, yes. <sighs> anyway. Thanks again. I guess that's all for tonight. And it's been a week, but uh, this week's going to be better, and the next week will even be better than that. So just uh, keep with that attitude, and everything will be fine. So again, thanks for joining me tonight. Always a pleasure. Enjoy, have fun, be merry, and remember that if, uh, <laughs> if life isn't always fair, but it uh, doesn't mean you can't have a fair life. Take care.